Hey there, my name is Austin and I am a marine biologist. I think science and the people who make it happen are fascinating. Biology especially isn't all lab coats and shiny instruments. So I want to show you the scientific world as I know it. The down and dirty, groundbreaking research being done on a budget, the amazing people behind all of it, and my journey as a graduate student. Most importantly, I want to share how you can get involved to make the world a better place. This is Real World Science. So what do you do if you have a research question that requires you to go out and take photos or videos of something every single day? And what do you do when that something is underwater, like a coral or a fish? Well, you could kind of go a la my octopus teacher and just swim out with a camera every single day to take those photos and videos. But for most people, it's not that simple. Here in Hawaii, many of our study sites require boat access, and that costs money. And you know what graduate students don't have a lot of is money. Furthermore, you need to ask the question as a scientist, should you be going out every single day? Going to a study site and interacting with an animal can change its behavior. And if you're trying to do behavioral studies, that can be a problem. So while My Octopus Teacher is a wonderful Netflix documentary, it doesn't necessarily reflect realistic conditions in which to do good science. About two years ago, I had this exact same problem where I needed to go out and take photos of corals every single day. In fact, multiple times a day and I didn't have the money to take a boat out and take all those photos. The solution for me was Coral Cam, this little tiny camera that is most definitely not a GoPro. And today, I'm gonna to tell you all about it. While Coral Cam started out as a bit of a side project, it has evolved into something much more than that. It is now integral to my own research and the research of other graduate students. You see, if you want to leave a camera on the bottom of the ocean, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. Custom cameras can cost thousands of dollars and even commercially available cameras cost anywhere from $700 to $1,200 or $1,300. And you know who doesn't have even $700 to spend on every single camera when you want to put multiple cameras on the bottom of the ocean? It's graduate students. Coral Cam is cheap. It costs about $100 to build and deploy, including the cost of the underwater housing. Inside of this underwater housing are just a few components. There is the cheap action camera. This is basically a knockoff GoPro from Amazon. And these cost anywhere from $25 to $45 a piece. There's the printed circuit board, and there is a battery that powers that printed circuit board. The best thing about Coral Cam is that it meets my needs as a scientist on a budget. I can leave Coral Cam on a reef for weeks or months at a time, and it will capture photos or videos that entire time at the times that I need that data. I use Coral Cam in two ways. The first is to look at coral disease. Corals are animals just like you or I, and they get diseases just like you or I. The difference is that when corals get sick, it's maybe closer to leprosy in humans where parts of them just start falling off. Now, coral disease is rare. So when we do see it, we're really interested in capturing how quickly it progresses across a coral colony, as I'll show you in this video right here. What you see is you see a coral colony that has been infected with some disease, and this disease is progressing across the colony and wiping out the tissue. That tissue is sloughing off of the coral, and that coral colony is then dying. Being able to understand coral disease and the factors that contribute to coral disease is really important. So we're gonna talk about that in future videos where I give you some more detailed information on what I've been doing for my PhD. Sorry guys, there is a bird up here. You're gonna hear it throughout this video, but Hopefully it's not too annoying. I don't know what sort of bird it is, but it's just chirping like crazy. I'm not a bird person, not an ornithologist. I'm okay with that. So the second way that I'm using Coral Cam in my own PhD research is to investigate some of the earliest stages of coral life. When a coral is just a little larvae floating around out in the ocean, and it has to decide where on the reef it's going to settle and spend the rest of its life. I'm gonna talk about that project more in future videos. All you need to know right now is it involves a bunch of floor tiles from Home Depot that I'm cutting up, mounting to concrete, throwing down on the bottom of the ocean, and then putting a coral cam on to watch for coral larvae recruiting onto those materials. It's pretty hodgepodge, which is kind of how most graduate student research is, and that's what this whole channel is about. One of my favorite things about Coral Cam is all the new and creative ways that it gets put to use by other graduate students and scientists. The first person that I want to tell you about is Julie Zill. Julie is using Coral Cams to look at how the presence of eels impacts the behavior of Manini, one of their prey items. But the interesting thing here is that she's not looking at how eels eating Maninis changes their behavior. She's actually looking at how just the very presence of a predator changes a prey item's behavior. 
that kind of goes back to the previous problem we talked about, right? How being in a location, just being there to observe it, can change how the animals you're trying to observe might behave. So to get around that problem, Julie uses coral cams and GoPros. She puts her eels and her fish inside of tanks, and she puts her cameras in that tank, and then she walks away and lets the coral cams do the work of collecting the data for her. Next, I wanna talk about another way that coral cam is being used, which is by a friend of mine, Danny. Danny is doing really cool research to investigate interactions between corals and a coral predator, the cushion star. Cushion stars are called that because they kind of look like pincushions. And fun fact, they have a shrimp that only lives on the underside of them as they traverse the reef and the sand flats. Now, Danny just started her experiment, but we've already seen some really cool stuff. Like these two green sea turtles that showed up out of nowhere just to sit there and investigate what was going on inside of her experimental setup. So I made this video to tell you about Coral Cam and to tell you that if you want to build one of these yourself, you totally can. It's a fun weekend project and doesn't involve very much soldering at all. There is a link in the description to a manuscript that will give you a step-by-step -step build guide on how to make one yourself. If you do build a Coral Cam, please let me know what you get up to with it. I love to see all the creative ways that people use this tool. Maybe put it out in your local wetland to get an idea of environmental change or put it on a bird's nest in your backyard and watch those little suckers hatch out. One last thing. If you see a coral cam out in nature, remember, this is not a GoPro. This is a scientific instrument that most likely some graduate student has built. It might be covered in electrical tape. That's usually what we do when we put it out in the ocean. And it might look like trash. It might look like it's been out there for a few months. Please, please, please do not recover these cameras. They are out there for a reason. They are out there for someone's degree or research. And recovering a coral cam before it's meant to be recovered can really put those people's science in jeopardy. So that's episode one. That's all I got for you on this one. We've learned about Coral Cam and how it's being used to do real world science. If you guys have comments or critiques, ways that I can improve these videos or topics you want me to cover in the future, please put those down in the comments. My goal is that this channel can become a platform to elevate not only my own research, but also the research of other people who really deserve more credit for the really cool science that they're doing. So I think that's uh, just about all I got for you. Hopefully you learned something. See ya.